India and he marries a 16 year old girl. Headlines 50 year old Muslim Arab marries a 16 year old girl. But when a 50 year old non Muslim rapes a 6 year old girl, it comes in news brief. I mean, that human being is taking permission of the parents, marrying with permission, giving her due rights. What is the problem? Here, a non Muslim 50 year old rapes a 6 year old girl, it comes in news briefs. We know of the Oklahoma bombing, Middle East conspiracy, Middle East conspiracy, continuously. When they came to know it was an American soldier, the news died out in a couple of days. And you can give multiple examples how the media is playing games. And today they say that Islam is the religion which was spread by the sword. A very good reply is given by Dilesi O'Leary in his book, Islam at the Crossroad, on page number eight. It says that history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races, is the most fantastic myth that historians have ever repeated. Dilesi O'Leary is a very famous historian. He says, that history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races is the most fantastic myth that historians have ever repeated. We Muslims, history tells us, ruled Spain for about 800 years. We didn't do our job. We didn't do dawah. Later on, the crusaders came. We wiped out. There was not a single Muslim who could openly give the azan. We Muslims, we have ruled the Arab lands. For the past 1400 years, for a few years, the British just came. For the few years, the French came. But we Muslims have been the Lord of the Arab land for the past 1400 years. Yet today, statistics tell us there are 14 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians. Coptic Christian means Christians in generations. If we wanted, we could have converted every Arab into Islam by the point of the sword. We didn't do it. These 14 million Coptic Christians in Arab land. They are bearing witness, they are giving shahada that Islam wasn't spread by the sword. We Muslims, we ruled India for about a thousand years. Today, more than 80% of the Indians, they are non-Muslim. If we wanted, we could have converted every Indian at the point of the sword. We didn't do it. Islam does not give us permission. These 80% non-Muslim Indians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam wasn't spread by the sword. Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? Which Muslim army went to Indonesia, which has the largest population of Muslims? Which Muslim army went to Malaysia, which has more than 50% Muslim? Which army? Which sword? It is the sword of the intellect. As Allah says in Surah Nahl, chapter number 16, verse number 125, Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. There was an article, a survey done by Rida Rajas Almanic yearbook in 1984. It was repeated in the Plain Truth magazine. A survey was done about the increase in the major world religions in a span of 50 years from 1934 to 1984. And number one, the maximum increase was in the religion of Islam, 235%. Christianity, only 47%. I'm asking the question, which war took place in the span of 50 years between 1934 and 1984, which converted millions of non-Muslims to Islam? Which war? Which war? Today, the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. The fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. I'm asking, who is forcing these Americans, these Europeans to accept Islam at the point of the sword? Before 9-11, the maximum allegation about the media was that Islam does not give rights to the women. Do you know, out of those people accepting Islam, including in America and Europe, out of those non-Muslims accepting Islam, two-thirds are women. If Islam degrades the women, then why do these American women, why are these European women accepting Islam? Why? The media is saying that Islam degrades the women, then why are these American and European women accepting Islam? Because Islam has the solution to the problem of womankind, especially the womankind. 
they find security in Islam. We know you are deadly. She had gone to Afghanistan to spy on the Taliban. She was arrested for seven days. She comes back. She's so much impressed. Time does not permit me to speak about details. Many of you may be aware. She reads the Quran and she accepts Islam. People ask her that, how did the Taliban treat you? They treated me like a guest. The amount of respect they gave her, the amount of modest behavior it was, it changed the heart. And mashallah, today she is wearing a hijab, she lives in London. A British reporter sent to write against the Muslims, accepts Islam, alhamdulillah. And after 9-11, Whenever I go to America and Europe, there are more non-Muslims coming to my talk than before. More Americans, more Europeans. I believe in the verse of the Quran, Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 54, which says, Makaru makarallahu wallahu khairul makreen. They planned and plotted Allah to plan. Allah is the best of planner. After 9-11, in the span of 9 months, in USA alone, 34,000 Americans accepted Islam. <laughs> According to Yohan Redley, in a span of 9 to 10 months after 9 11, 22,000 Europeans accepted Islam. The more they're attacking Islam, the more Islam is rising. Not because we are doing our job. Wallah, we aren't doing our job. You and I are not doing the job. Allah gives a promise in the Quran in no less than three different places. In Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 9. In Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 33. And Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 20, Allah says, Huwa lazi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa din al haq. That Allah has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other religions, over all the other ways of life. Islam is destined to supersede all. This religion of peace, this religion of haq will supersede all the other ways of life. And enough is Allah as a witness. However much the non-Muslim don't like it, however much the mushrik don't like it, Islam is destined to supersede all. Allah does not require you and me the rubbish that we are. Allah does not require you and me. Allah is sufficient to make his deen prevail. He is giving us an opportunity to do a prophet's job and to earn a prophet's reward. He is giving us an appointment to da'wah. This religion is going to prevail. This deen of haq, this deen of truth, this religion of peace is bound to prevail. And a very good statement was given by Adam Pearson. He says that people worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. <laughs> now let us analyze what does the media say. We'll discuss about each type of media in brief. First, we run the print media. According to an article which came in the Time magazine, on 16th of April, 1979, written by Christian, he writes that more than 60,000 books have been written against Islam in a span of 150 years. From 1800 to 1950, more than 60,000 books have been written against Islam. If you calculate, more than one book is written every day. More than one book is written every day against Islam and against a prophet. And after 9-11, this has reached epidemic levels. Every day, several books are written against Islam. And we Muslims, what are we doing? These Christian missionaries, they are spreading. They are doing their job. They are printing literature and distributing. Here we have one sample. This is, I asked an Arab Sheikh in my last trip, what is this? He read as Allah Muhammad. But if you read very carefully, it is not Allah Muhammad, it is Allah Muhabbah, which means God is love. 